to the finish line. Last little bit, something we need to do to this client before it's ready for its new owner. Need to trim these guys up. A little trick with the front derailleur on that. Make sure they're all adjusted, nice and tight, and wrapping the bars and do a recap after this. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with the guy. Hi, I'm Justin the guy. Obviously, I'm a garage shop. Taking scary how to use bikes one bike at a time. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Hello, welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with the guy. Hi, I'm Justin the guy. So we're finishing off this Klein Raw X. It is in, gonna be in mint condition. I mean, there's a few scratches, obviously. But as it sits, it's going to shift, stop, perform, and give somebody one excellent experience. So without further ado, let's dive into this guy. Um, so did the derailleurs and the brakes, just need to finish that up. Just need a couple of cables um, on the front. Or the brake cables, I like to leave about a finger width down from the actual uh, brake caliper. Uh, that way, it gives a little extra room. Um, so when you need to replace those cables or housing or anything like that, or just need to take the brakes off, uh, you have a little bit of wiggle room um, of putting you reusing those cables. You don't want them too short. And on the rear derailleur, it's usually like two to three inches. On the front derailleur, I like to leave a nice kind of uh, extension because I'm going to be folding it back over onto itself and zip tie it. So. Um, let's just do a little sh close up on that one. Well, what I like to do is give it a little bit of a distance here. You can see on the rear, only did a little bit, you know, about two, three inches. Here it's going to be more like about five inches. Reason being is I want to loop it over. So I'm going to cut that guy. And I'm going to go with red. cable ends on this guy. So we'll put a cable in on this and just use a crimper just to, so it holds its place. While we're here, we'll do the rear derailleur as well. Um, there's a little flare of extra red that matches the wheels. And on the brake here, what I like to do is I like to loop the zip tie around this back cable that goes into the derailleur and push this down so this little thing doesn't stick out and dangle. And tap your leg when you're pedaling around, like so. Got that, so you want to cut this trim. Like I talked about before, you want to cut it as close as you can so it doesn't stick out and cut anybody. So that's how you get that. And now it's perfectly out of the way. So it's not going to bump into somebody's foot and it's still, still long enough to reuse if you need to switch that out for any various reasons. While we're here, I'll just put these pedals on. So you want to put a little bit of grease on the threads here. That keeps them from binding up and easier to take off. This is gonna be the bigger size. So these are gonna take an eight millimeter to put on them off. So R is right, so that'd be the right foot. The left is that one there. So how these go on, easiest way to remember is if you pedal backwards, that tightens them because one, one side is reverse thread. Put that on there like so. Go on to the other side, same thing. But you should be able to put these on without too much pressure. You shouldn't have to force the threads. Sometimes they get a little buggered up, you need a little bit, but you don't wanna put it in a situation where you're cross threading it. And on these, there's not a um, uh, 15 millimeter Allen, so. So you take our 15 millimeter box wrench. So you need to use this Allen wrench. Same thing, you go here, tighten it up going there. So when you're going to release it, you just push it down. And be careful of the teeth of the chain rings because they will cut you. So since I got the pedals and the cable ends on the 
derailleurs, I'll just go ahead and finish off the brakes here. Same kind of thing, just a little bit of a crimp on those and we're all head right into doing the bar tape. Like so. All right, I have the favorite part. Giving a wrap, wrapping her up. No pun intended, and kinda is. Anyway, um, yeah, it's, um, this bike's been a lot of fun to work on due to the fact that uh, the vintage and the year is not really too old. It's one of the newer kinds per se um, before they stopped producing them. And what's really cool is it's actually in really good shape uh, has 105 componentry, so yeah, it doesn't have ulterior durace, but it's still really good stuff. Um, and it does shift really well, uh, considering its age, the original componentry on it. So in the wheels, I was surprised that I didn't find any problems with those at all. So it has a lot of life on it, and it will make somebody an awesome bike. Um, what's really cool is you're not gonna see yourself riding on the bike paths or the roads because it's completely a unique bike. So unique, I haven't seen very many of these. I've only worked on a few of them um, doing when I've been refurbishing. And like I mentioned before, I have one and uh, also I got my wife one as well. So, <laughs> and the funny thing is they're both the same paint job. So we're all matchy matchy. Did not do that on purpose. But it just came, it turned out that way, you know. Uh, so when we go riding together, we still have, we both have the very pretty purple, shiny Klein bikes, which is kind of funny. Uh, but they both ride really well. Um, and it's just really kind of cool to have something that's unique. And with the experience of riding different types of bikes, it's, it's um, not like the endurance of, Positioning, it's a little more aggressive, but not totally racing, so it's a good compromise in between. So it, it does give you that good um, good overall ride, per se. Uh, this one's a double, so it doesn't have a lot of climbing gears, but um, it does still have a wide enough range for majority of riding that's done out there kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, we'll just give her some Nice black bar tape to go with this. So we got these caps. So there's a lot of different types of bar tape out there. I mean, you can go crazy, get pretty expensive stuff, um, some more uh, padded or gel, more traditional. You can get the kind of like, like even the cloth kind, which is kind of crazy. You can still make those. Um, but for me, these are, this is a pretty decent, um, Ceram bar tape. Uh, it holds up pretty well. I've been putting on this on bikes for the last couple of years. And then when I've had bikes come back for me to work on them or what have you, that I wrapped with this bar tape, it seems to hold up really well. So very, very happy with it, uh, for considering how inexpensive it is. Um, but you can get the type that has a gel that's built into it or gel inserts that go on top. I have one customer who likes the Shimano, really the wide tape. Um, <laughs> it was kind of a trip. It's like double the width of this, so kind of uh, wrapping and that was a new experience. Got it on there. It was fine. Um, so yeah, it was pretty, pretty cool. Get my logo going the right direction. All right. So this particular bike is obviously it's in the 2000s. But <coughs> it was built in the United States before they actually moved truck before they moved trucks facility overseas. So this has the OCLV carbon in the back and I believe the front fork too. Um, and the granite tube they still they were still using at the time. And they were using it throughout their line. They're using it not on their road bikes and mountain bikes as well. Uh, the key takeaway on this particular specific road bike that they made is the dropouts are reversed, so they go into the frame, which the idea was to push the energy 
and the likelihood of that wheel sliding out is none. And uh, you just get more of an efficiency to it, which was really cool at the time. Um, the chain stay as it goes to the drivetrain, they start off square in the bottom bracket area to uh, get a stiff, stiffer ride and accelerates more of that energy or all that energy into the drivetrain. So you got a lot of drivetrain props, so if you get to push the pedal on it, you're gonna go, it's gonna fly. Um, I've ridden a couple of the Kleins, I've had a couple of Kleins, and the one I got now has the carbon stays like this one, which takes the edge off. The other ones without the carbon stays, they're fast, but boy, you can feel it after those longer rides for sure. Um, but the overall acceleration and the quickness and handling is definitely Ferrari-like. I mean, it's, it is definitely on their on point game back then when they put these things together. And this is a bike, I mean, yeah, it has 105 componentry on it, but if somebody got this bike and rode it for a couple seasons and seasons just getting into it and they wanted to upgrade, it definitely warrants the upgrade to upgrade the wheels, upgrade the drivetrain, I mean, I upgraded mine. I just bought mine as a frame, the Klein that I got, and I upgraded with all Durace. And the thing is super light. Turned out, oh, I think it was like 15, 16 pounds. Um, pretty, pretty, pretty light for, for that uh, age for sure. Um, got some nice high-end Mavic wheels on there. Didn't go carbon, those are just a little more on the used market, a little pricey for me, and kind of just grabbed what I had, um, which was nice. I had a Durace kit <laughs> available. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a cool little thing. And I'll ride it with combination with my other road bikes, and mountain bikes, and cyclocross bikes, so. Yeah, I got, a, I got a few in the stable, um, which, you know, I'm very fortunate that my wife is uh, very understanding of that. Um, if I get a couple a year. <laughs> and some I sell, some, some I won't. <laughs> which is, yeah, I kind of, kind of, yeah, you know, work around that. Get on this side. There you go. So yeah, this is uh, this is gonna be a, definitely a gem for somebody. It's really gonna be a really fun fun bike, and like I mentioned before in the video series, is if you haven't ridden one of these, oh, come here. Um, it's definitely something that you definitely want to ride, experience. So yeah, it's, uh, you know, this is where they were, you know, I would say this bike really compares really well to um, anything that's new in the sense um, that's coming out is it has, you know, the higher end tech that they've been working with for a long time. Stuff. Fast and the unfortunately I don't have sun right now, so putting this together in the wintertime. So it's um really pretty in the sunlight. It's a white paint. Well the decaling is painted on there, and you can kind of see you know, this little scuff that they have here where um they painted the gray of the decaling first. And then they stenciled it, and they painted the white and pulled the stencil. Well, then they painted the, the silver kind of chameleon kind of color to it. And on top of that, they have a super thick clear coat. So you can tell the thickness of the paint is pretty, pretty amazing. And the paint, the expensive paint 
on these guys is pretty expensive. They uh, did not hold back on the cost on the paints. Klein was known for his paint jobs and they definitely kept that when uh, Trek purchased them, which was pretty cool that they were able to do that. Like some companies that get purchased and they do a whole bunch of changes. The clients actually embraced it and actually uh, carried, carried over a lot of those and gave them an opportunity and money to expand on it for a few years. I was under the truck umbrella, so. So if yeah, you see any clients from 98 and newer, if it's something you wanna try, mountain or road of life, it's definitely something to look into for sure. I would uh, highly recommend it. Put these guys in. These guys are kind of fun and they're reflective on these, which is nice safety thing. Or you can put, there's lights or mirrors. Put in the end plugs of the bars. Get a little professional look on there. A little extra polishing. The hoods, so they're nice and clean. And the last bit is the tags. Well, uh, I put some dot stickers on here to kind of protect the frame from the cable rubbing. They were basically frame stickers that I got and I realized they're a little too small for frame stickers. You can't read them, but they turned out to be really good for uh, protecting the frame. So, hey, you know, the extra thousand stickers actually came in really good use. And get this guy right here. And Marvels of Technology, a QR code. That guy right there. Voila! Ready for its new owner. Well, again, thank you for hanging out with me. This one's ready to hit the road. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to whoever gets this is going to be just blown away by how it rides. Even if you're just a beginner, this would be one hell of a beginner bike to start off with. Um, it's in really good shape. It'll get you where you, where you want to go. If you want to get, you know, upgrade later on, you're already kind of partially there. Um, this has a lot of life still on it. So it's going to be a stellar, stellar experience for whoever gets this bike. So, well, again, if you like these videos, like, and subscribe. Thanks again and have a wonderful day until next time from the garage.